Hi everybody, Debbie Reynolds with Rocky Mountain Lodge here today and I am so excited for this month of May to start you out with showing you one of my very favorite things that I love to do and how I like to entertain. My favorite thing that I like to do is host tea parties. And so for all of May, I'm going to show you different things about tea parties. I'll show you some scones today, my famous cream scones, which are the most easy of all the scones to make. They're very versatile. You can change them up, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. In a little bit. Um, next week, I'll show you some of the accompaniments that go with these scones. I'll teach you how to make, we'll do a two for one next week. And I'll teach you how to make lemon curd and Devonshire cream next week which are must-haves with scones, any kind of scones. They're the best. I've been to lots of tea parties and tea houses and hardly anybody serves lemon curd anymore. They'll sure serve cream, but nobody serves lemon curd. Um, and it is just to die for. So next week I'll show you how to make those and then we'll make move on to some tea sandwiches, tea cookies, little tarts, show you how to make some little tartlet crusts and some fillings and so, We'll just have a blast this month of May making tea parties. I actually had one of my neighbors over a couple of days ago for an impromptu tea party um, out in my gazebo. Uh, we kept our distance on the opposite side of the gazebo, but it was so much fun to just get outside, visit, and have a little tea party with a couple of girlfriends. So today I'm going to teach you how to make cream scones, which are super easy, but they are very tender, very delicate. Um, but you'll be surprised at how easy they are to make. So some of the ingredients we're going to use, I have all of my ingredients already ready and out. That's called mise in place, which means everything in place. So right now I have four cups of sifted flour. And I showed you in another video when you're doing your flour, when you're going to sift your flour and measure out your flour. You don't want to just take your cup, measuring cup and scoop it in your flour because that will make it more heavy and dense and compact. You want to take a measure, take a scoop and take an empty measuring cup, scoop your flour into your measuring cup and then level it off and then it's a little bit lighter. And so I've got my four cups of sifted flour here. All of these recipes that I've been making you can find in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabins More Favorite Recipes. Hopefully you can read this the right way today. I can't remember. If I turn this video around, please let me know if this is, um, you're reading this correctly or if the words are backwards, I can easily fix it if it's backwards. And please like this video, video share it, and uh, make comments, and I will um, be happy to reply to any comments you have and put down any recipes you wanna see me make in the future, and I'll get those up there one of these weeks. All right, so we've got our flour. The next thing we have is I have my baking powder. I have two tablespoons plus two teaspoons. And because, oh, thanks Holly, that is backwards. Let me see if I can fix that. All right, let me see if I can do that. All right, go into there. Okay, I've got it fixed, but on my end, everything is green. Is it green on your end or is it colored appropriately? You guys let me know. I don't want to have a green video. I'd rather be backwards than have you watch everything in green. Can somebody just let me know if it's backwards? Or I mean, if it's green? Okay. Hi there. Hi, Tammy. Um, hi, Charles. Chuck, good to see you. Okay, it's green. All right, then we're just going to turn it around and be backwards. I don't know what the problem is with Facebook today. All right. So I'd rather it be in correct color than in backwards. I'm not sure what's going on today. So now I'm not green. Okay, not the Wicked Witch from the, the, the West or East, whatever it is. All right. Okay, so we've got our flour. I've got my two, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of baking powder. And I mentioned in another um, video before, is it still green? Hopefully it's not still green. If it's still green, let me know. Um, or if it's not green... Let me know that it's fixed. All right, so baking powder. When you live at high altitude, you wanna use less leavening. So I tend to measure out my uh, teaspoons and then I'll scoop out about a quarter of what I've gotten there for high altitude. So you need less leavening when you're at high altitude. All right, I've got a teaspoon of salt. I have four tablespoons of sugar. 
Okay, thanks, Leslie. Let me know it's fixed. I have one cup of cream. I have one stick, a half a cup of butter cut into cubes. I have four whole eggs. We're going to end up using, oops, don't want to dump those in there. I have three whole eggs in here, and I have one whole egg in here. What we're going to end up needing is three whole eggs and one egg yolk. But we're going to save the egg white to top our scones later on. Now, I don't know if you all have ever had any trouble on separating your eggs. So I'm gonna tell you my way of separating eggs. And so I tend to just put my whole egg in the bowl and then I will just scoop out the yolk. Make sure you have clean hands though. So I'll just scoop out the yolk and leave the whites in there. Otherwise I've done Separated eggs, I bought an egg separator. They're just a pain in the butt and they take too much time. So I don't rec recommend buying one of those little separate egg se separators. They're not worth your money. My mom used to crack the egg in half and put it over the bowl and she would just go back and forth catching the yolk and letting the white drip down. But I've broken a lot of yolks doing that. So I have found that just kind of scooping it out with your hands works the best for me. Just make sure your hands are clean. All right, and so those are our ingredients that we have. I also have some things that we're gonna use a little later, is I just have a little bowl of flour that I'm gonna use for dusting, and then I have another little plate of flour that I'm gonna to use to dip my cutter in so that things don't stick. And then for later on, I have some vanilla sugar. I know this is backwards, sorry about that. Better backwards than green though. So the way I make vanilla sugar is I just put sugar in a container and whenever I use vanilla beans for anything, if I'm gonna make um, some creme brulee or anything else that I might need or some creme fraiche, anything, not creme fraiche. Anyways, whatever I use vanilla beans for, I'll scrape out the, bean, the seeds and then I take the beans and then I just put them in a container of sugar and it's gonna infuse your sugar with that vanilla flavor. And then I save this and I put it on top of all of my scones, my strawberry shortcake, my pie crust, so many different things you can use with that. So whenever you have vanilla beans, just stick them in sugar and save them. It's gonna smell so good. And then it makes it look pretty too. All right, so I'll set that aside for now. So I'm just gonna take my little whisk and I'm gonna add in the rest of these dry ingredients. There's that teaspoon of salt two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of baking powder, a little less because I'm at high altitude, my sugar, and I'm just gonna whisk these up. And the reason why I use a whisk to whisk these is because it keeps it light and airy. If I were to just use a spoon, that works just fine too, but the whisk actually puts a little bit of air in there and so it'll keep them nice and light. All right, and so now, I'm gonna take my butter and I'm gonna cut my butter in. I have a pastry cutter that I use. This is my little pastry cutter that I like to use. Before I ever had a pastry cutter, I used to just new, use two butter knives. If you don't have two butter, lot, butter knives, um, you can even just use your hands and get in there. But what we want, the reason why we want to cut it in is because we want to leave chunks of butter in there and that's what's going to make them nice and flaky. I've used a food processor for this before too, but I don't like how it doesn't, it, blend, it mixes it up and blends it up a little bit too much for what I like. I like to have lots of little pieces of butter that you can see. So you want to just keep cutting that butter in until your butter is about the size of peas. And then once that is done, so any pastry you wanna cut your butter in with pastry blender, pastry cutter, two butter knives, or just crumble it up with your hands. But you wanna make sure that you have clumps of butter in there. And that's what's gonna keep them nice and flaky. So all done with that. Then I've got my one cup of cream. I'm gonna add my three whole eggs and one egg yolk to those. And then just mix these up. 
So they're a little bit, so they're incorporated together. I'm gonna reach back here and get a spoon, forgot to do that. All right, setting this egg white aside. All right, so now I've got these mixed. And so I'm gonna make a well in the middle of my dry ingredients. So you can see this is kind of a hole in the middle. And then I'm gonna pour the wet ingredients into my dry ingredients and scrape that all out and get that in there. Oh, and one more thing, before you start doing this, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. So 400 degrees, get your oven nice and hot. You're also going to want to line a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. You don't have to do this. It just makes cleanup a lot easier. I'd rather just take that parchment paper and throw it away and be done with it than have to clean my cookie sheet. A little lazy, but it works pretty well. All right. So I'm just mixing these up. We're just gonna get these until they're nice, just barely wet. We don't wanna over mix it because that will make them a little more tough. They'll be more tender the less you mix it. And make sure your milk, your cream, and your butter are nice and cold. If they're not cold, once you get it all mixed up in here like this, and once you get them all cut up, then you can just put them in the refrigerator for about 10, 15 minutes or so until they get nice and chilled again and then bake them. And that will keep your scones from falling or spreading. It's good to see you guys all on there today. Thanks for tuning in. Tea party is my favorite. I've been doing these ever since my little girls were little. They love tea parties. They grew up having tea parties. As a matter of fact, my daughters and I are gonna have a tea party in the backyard this on this Sunday on Mother's Day. All right, so I've got that into um, just, just nicely incorporated. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this flour and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on my table there. And I'm gonna dump out my dough and just bring it into a ball you want to be tender with this. You don't want to be really rough with it. We're not going to really be kneading it. We're basically just bringing it into a ball just enough so that it sticks together. The less we work it, the more flaky these will be. All right. And so now you can do a couple of different things. Once you get it here, you can either just pat it down or you can take a rolling pin. I have a couple of different rolling pins and I'll give you a little tip about rolling pins. This is kind of rolling pin that most people use, fine and dandy. And then this is a French rolling pin. These kind of rolling pins are wider in the middle and then they taper off to the ends. And that's because, um, uh, let me sprinkle this with flour. The reason why that is, is because when you're rolling out pie crust, sometimes they'll get too thin around the outside edges. So this helps keep it a little bit more incorporated with your rolling it out. And a lot of times people will roll things out and they'll go back and forth and back and forth. You don't want to go back and forth when you're rolling things out. It'll make it more tough and then it won't be as even either. And so I sprinkled a little bit of flour on my dough. I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit on my rolling pin so things don't stick. Whenever you're rolling dough out, you want to start in the middle and work your way out. Just work your way out from the middle out. Okay, and we're just gonna roll this out to about three quarters of an inch thick. So we want it nice and, nice and tall, so that way when those scones are done, you can just break them in half and then you kinda have two scones there. And you can kinda, I don't know if you guys can see, but there are clumps of butter here in my dough. And that's definitely what you wanna see to make them nice and flaky. Okay, so rolling from the middle out. And I will actually even go around my edges and just kind of pat them together to try to keep it shape. And that's about three quarters of an inch, maybe closer to an inch. If you go too thin, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. They're gonna taste just this delicious. So don't worry. There's really not any right or wrong way. They're pretty easy. Now we're gonna cut them out. I have a few different sizes of cookie cutters here that you can see. 
One of my grandkids just came over. They live next door. Abby, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Come over here. This is Abby. She lives right next door. A couple of days ago, she came over and had some scones, too. What do you like on your scones? What's your favorite topping? Uh, the Devonshire cream. The Devonshire cream. That's your favorite. What do you need? Uh, April 8, mine. April 8, your scone? No. No, the candy. Oh, so you're coming to get more? Yeah, okay. she ate. Okay. All right. That's what happens when you have eight grandkids next door. You give them treats, and then sometimes... One kid gets two, and another kid gets none. Go ahead. What, what candy did you have? Uh, it was a Snickers. They all had Snickers. A Snickers? Yeah. Okay. They're in the pantry. You can ask Pa. Okay. All right. All right. Time out there for a second. All right. So, I have three different sizes of cookie cutters here. There's a large, a medium, and a small. My grandkids like to call them the babies. And so you can use whatever sizes you want. You can use a big cutter if you want. You can use a medium size. You can use a small. When I host tea parties for lots and lots of ladies, like at church or something, I'll use a small one. So that way you can get lots of them and people can try lots of different kinds of scones because I usually make two or three different kinds of scones when I host parties. Today, I'm going to use the middle size. And so I'll dip it in my little flour right here. My mama taught me this growing up. You dip it in that and then nothing's going to stick. And so then you can take it out and you can see how they have little bits of butter in there and they're kind of flaky. And now I'm just going to set them on that cookie sheet on the parchment paper and just keep cutting all of these out and put them on there. You want to put them about a half an inch to an inch apart. Hopefully they won't spread very much. We really don't want them to spread, but sometimes they do. The colder they are, the less they will spread. If they're warmer, they might spread. So if you think they're too warm, just pop them in the refrigerator for a little bit and get them nice and cold. All right. So I've got six. I'm just going to finish off this row. When we're done with doing these, you can roll your dough back up again. And just keep going until you use up all of your dough. I'm just, for time's sake today, I'm just going to do the one layer that we've got here. And then I'll show you what we do with those scones. A couple more I think I can get out of this. Did you guys have tea parties growing up? Hopefully you did. If not... It's time to start. All right, so I'm just going to set that dough aside for now, but otherwise you can just kind of pat this back together. Remember, we don't want to work it too hard. We want to keep it nice and light and fluffy. So I would typically just kind of get it back into a ball again, fold it back down, put a little flour, and, and um, get those going some more. So that's what we'll do with those. Now, I told you, let me just wipe off this flour so I can bring my cookie sheet over here without making a bigger mess. I'll clean that up later. All right, so right now I've got 11 of these medium-sized scones. I can probably get about, oh, about 18 maybe out of that whole rest of the dough, maybe a little less. And so we're just gonna put these an inch or two apart like this. And that extra egg white that we set aside, I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of water to this all I'm really gonna do is go over to my sink and just add a splash of cold water. All right, and then I'm just gonna mix that up with a fork here. And when I put this on these scones, it's gonna make them glisten, make them nice and shiny when they come out of the oven. And it's also gonna give that vanilla sugar something to adhere to. All right, so we're just going to brush these all up really quick with a little bit of this egg wash. All right, there's that. And now I'm going to take some of this vanilla sugar. Sorry, it's backwards, but like I said, better backwards than green, right? Okay, all right, so now I'm just going to sprinkle these with this vanilla sugar. Okay. 
All right, and that's it. Now they're ready to go into the oven. You can see some of the butter pieces in there. And I'll pop those in the oven and I'm gonna grab some out of the oven that I have in there right now. They're gonna cook in there for 10 minutes. All right, so here are some completed scones. We cooked them for 10 minutes in the oven. You can see they're nice and golden brown. They puffed up pretty nicely. They've got that sparkly sugar on there. They turn out so good. And so what I'm gonna do now is, I'm just gonna take one of these. I've got a little plate here, and these should just break right apart. Like this, you can see how nice and crumbly and flaky they are. They're delicious. And, okay, and then they're best served with lemon curd, Devonshire cream, and any type of jam that you have. My personal favorite is lemon curd and Devonshire cream mixed together. So I'll just put some of that curd right on there. Spread it around a little bit. Top it off with a little bit of this Devonshire cream. And then you can even add jam. Some of the kids, when they come over next door, they want all three. Abby's favorite is the cream. So there's, there's one of those right there, all ready to eat. And then you can serve it with your favorite cup of tea or coffee. And that is how we make our cream scones. Super easy, really delicious, melt in your mouth and everybody will be impressed when you make these. So like this video, share this video, any questions you might have, put them on there and I will be happy to answer any questions. Mark down what you want me to make on there in the future and I'd be happy to make it for you. This recipe you can find online at our website, rockymountainlodge.com. Click on the recipes tab and you'll find it there. And you can also Get it in our cookbook, and I know it's backwards, sorry. Uh, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's more favorite recipes that you can find in, at our website at rockymountainlodge.com on our gift shop tab. Have a great time, and we'll see you next Wednesday when I make for you a two-for-one. Oh, that would be my husband. Brian has to get his little two cents in there photo bomb. So next week we'll make lemon curd and Devonshire cream. We'll have a two for one. See you next Wednesday at two o'clock mountain time. Bye guys. Have a great day and happy Mother's Day to all you moms.